Hello crafty friends, I'm Lynn from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be back with another YouTube video using some new products from A Pocket Full of Happiness. I am very weak for A Pocket Full of Happiness, they're one of my favorite brands and I love their dyes so I had to pick up some of this new release and make some beautiful Easter cards with it. Now I'm using the Happy Easter Sentiment Dye, the Peekaboo Cover Plate which is a very lovely and cleverly designed cover plate. I am so, so happy I got it. And the Floral Heart die set as well. This one is actually from the January release. Now I am going to make two Easter cards today featuring that cover plate. I'm going to make one very simple card using the cover plate because it's so cleverly designed. It's very easy to make a beautiful card with it. And then I'm going to mix it up a little bit for my second card. For this first simple card, I am just going to stack two of these backgrounds together. I cut it twice out of white cardstock and I'm gluing them together with Barely Art Precision Craft glue. Now it's very easy to switch this up and use any colors or papers you have. I am using this very old paper pad that I got from Action, which is sort of a dollar store here. And I cut a couple of colors of cardstock up from that into rectangles that would fit behind my eggs. So I measured the eggs and I, um, I just gave myself a little bit of clearance so I knew there wouldn't be any uh, white showing through. So it's a little bit larger than the egg openings and I like it that way. So I just put some glue right around the eggs and on the bunny ears and I glue all of those pieces of cardstock behind it. It goes very quickly. I did figure out the order of my colors before I started gluing this down because I am a little bit of a control freak like that, but you can just make a random order and that would be really beautiful too if you have a nice color palette. To finish this card, I'm going to use that Happy Easter Sentiment die set. I love the sentiment dies from A Pocket Full of Happiness because it's a very fun way to use a sentiment die. You get the shadow layer, which is pretty common, um, but then the scripty layer actually cuts out two pieces at once. It cuts out the letters and you also get the outline. So it's a very very fun way to change up your sentiments. Now today I am just going to use the letters, I'm not going to use the outline, but do know that it is a lot less fiddly to use the outline instead. It's a lot easier to put those together uh, because it's one piece. I've stacked up my shadow layer, it is two layers of white cardstock and one layer of gold and my letters are already glued together as well, those are two layers of white cardstock stacked together too. Now before I glue these down onto my shadow layer, I actually add glue to the back of the letter and then I dab off all excess glue um, on just a white scrap piece of cardstock and that is going to keep any glue from oozing out of the sides, I hate when that happens and especially on gold cardstock, which is kind of a slick surface, it's very easy for that to happen. So just a great way to not have that happen is to dab off the excess glue before you adhere it down onto your shadow layer. This cover die cuts a scalloped edge all the way around, which is a really fun detail, I think. But I want to preserve that, so I want to cut my card base a little bit smaller. I just trimmed it down with my paper trimmer, and once it's smaller than the scallops, those scallops are a lot more noticeable. So just glue that behind the cover plate then. I'm just using some more of that Barely Art Precision Craft glue, covering my card base with it and that way I can easily adhere it down on the back of that cover plate. I did say that this was a very simple card, so I'm only going to add the sentiment now. Um, because this is quite dimensional, I didn't put foam tape behind it, but you definitely could. Um, it's a good look if it's floating up, it casts beautiful shadows that way, but I, I just didn't think it was necessary for this card. I really like the matte gold sentiments on those very shiny gold alcohol ink backgrounds. It has some gold foiling in it, it's beautiful. I'm trying to center these sentiments, but it's always a little bit <laughs> difficult, especially when you have those letters that have a little swoosh at the end, like the R. 
I don't know how to center that. Does the swoosh count? <laughs> then it should have definitely been shifted a little bit more to the left. As a finishing touch, I am adding some gold matte pearls from Pinkfresh Studio. It works great with the sentiments, which are also matte gold. And that finishes that card. It, I did say it was very simple, again. <laughs> But with cleverly designed products, we don't have to be clever. That's what I love about this amazing cover plate. But I am going to switch it up for this second card. I'm starting out with making a watercolor background with Distress Spray Stains. This is very easy to do. All you need is some Distress Spray Stains. I got some for Christmas and I've been playing around with them. I love them. And you need some watercolor cardstock because things are going to get wet. Um, you or I did spray this down with some water first because that gets the colors moving around and then I just sprayed a couple of things. I used tethered rose and um, dried marigold and some other pink. I'm very bad with names of colors but I just played around with it. Um, the way you get more texture in this is to dry it in between layers. So I used my heat tool for that and I also added some splatter once it was dry uh, because that makes it stand out a little bit more than if you do it on wet cardstock. Um, what else did I do? I did add a little bit of a darker pink spray too, just in a couple of spots. And then once that was dry, I also went back in with more clean water and I splattered that on as well. And when you dab that away, it is going to lift some of that ink and leave some white spots in there. That is really fun too as well. I'm going to use that peekaboo cover plate again and I'm only going to die cut one of the bunnies from gold cardstock. I'm going to tape that in place with washi tape before I roll it through my machine. And once it comes out, I am going to cut around it with some scissors. I'm going to create this egg bunny outline and I'm going to do that twice more from white cardstock so I can add some dimension and most of all stability behind this very dainty egg outline. Now I'm not gonna lie, this was a lot harder to do than I expected. <laughs> it, I thought it, was, it would be easy because I'm pretty good at fussy cutting things but for some reason this was really fussy to do. <laughs> It also warped the shape of the egg a little bit when I cut around it. So stacking those white layers behind the gold one was a bit of a challenge because they all had a different shape at the end of it, um, which wasn't what I intended. And this doesn't happen with a die cut, but it was a little fussy to do, but it's also the only fussy thing on this card. So I think it's worth it. And it's a very different look to get from that cover plate. Now I wanted to put that gold egg, that beautiful dainty gold egg in a bit of a floral arrangement. So I'm using the floral heart die set to cut some tiny flowers and leaves. The leaves I actually cut from vellum. It's a green vellum, but if you don't have colored vellum, you can color your own. Use alcohol markers or ink. Put it on the back of the vellum um, just because you are going to smear it because it dries so slowly. But you can absolutely color vellum. I just happen to have a variety pack with a couple of colors in it. And I'm just going to add a sentiment also to my Distress Spray Stain background before I assemble anything. Usually I forget when I have to stamp a sentiment and I try to do it in the end, at the end and it's always so much more difficult to do. I am using the Jane's Doodles Happy Easter stem set to do that with my Misty, some Versafine Onyx Black ink. And you know me, I am going to emboss this with WOW Clear Gloss Super Fine Embossing Powder as well. Because I'm embossing, I'm making sure it's stamped very well. This is watercolor cardstock, there is some texture to it. So to make sure it's stamped nicely, I'm stamping it twice. Then I can add some embossing powder to this and heat set that as well. That's going to make it nice and shiny. I love a shiny, glossy black sentiment like that. I'm going to back this little rectangle with a piece of cardboard that is going to provide some um, very sturdy dimension 
and I'm just gluing that together with Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. To make the whites of this card match, <laughs> I am going to put watercolor cardstock on my entire card base as well. This is a very me thing to do, but you don't have to do it. I just like the whites to match. Watercolor cardstock is a very creamy white and it definitely does clash with the colder white of my card bases usually. Now I'm starting to arrange this. I used the egg as a guide because I knew where I wanted to place the egg or where I roughly wanted to place the egg. And I keep bringing it in or I try to keep it in place and I glue the foliage behind it first and then I arrange the florals on there as well. Now for the foliage you can see that I just glued down the very bottom of the leaves with a very small amount of glue and for the floral for the flowers I am just going to put some glue on the bottom of the stems and I'm going to put a small piece of foam tape behind the flower itself. That's just going to make sure it has some nice dimension behind it as well because I do intend to put some dimension behind the gold bunny as well. You can use foam squares for this, but I stopped buying foam squares a long time ago. I put some foam tape onto baking paper. You can use parchment paper as well, anything that you can remove it from again. Um, and that way I can easily cut it down into smaller pieces. I propped the egg up on some small pieces of foam tape as well. And then I had one flower left over. These days I use leftover pieces to either close my envelopes with if they're big enough or if they're small like this one, I glue them down on the inside of my card. I never used to decorate the inside of my cards, but I thought it would be better to do that than to let those beautiful flowers go to waste. And that basically finishes up my card. All that's left to do is add some bling. I am going to add some really beautiful pink gems from Sunny Studio Stamps on the front of my card and I will try to link those below. I keep forgetting to link my gems uh, but these are really really pretty pink ones. If I forget leave me a comment so just to remind me. This is the finished card. I love that gold dainty egg. It's such a fun way to stretch this cover plate. You can get so many bunnies from this cover plate, nine to be exact, <laughs> but you can also just use this cleverly designed cover plate to make a quick card like this one. And this honestly took me 20 minutes to put together, even with stacking the sentiments. So it's a very quick one to make if you need to send a lot of Easter cards. I don't send a lot of them but I do enjoy making them. It's so spring, I love the bunnies, I love the colors for Easter. It's just a really fun way to get into a spring mood for me. I hope you like these cards, I hope you like the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video, leave your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to check out the description. I have all the products linked there. Um, where possible I have used affiliate links and if you purchase anything through those I do get a small commission so it's a great way to support me and my channel. You can also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.